Hello, and welcome to the webinar, Get Up and Move. I'm Alma Dell Smith, PhD, at the National Massive Violence and Victimization Resource Center, the Medical University of South Carolina. Uh, in a moment, I'll do a screen share and we can begin. No, we're gonna stop now. Hello, and welcome to this webinar, Get Up and Move. I'm Dr. Alma Dell Smith, a psychologist at the National Mass Violence Victimization Resource Center at the Medical University of South Carolina in Charleston, South Carolina. This webinar is particularly geared for those who have been exposed to mass violence or whom someone they deeply care about uh, friends or family who may have been exposed to violence and who are recovering from the shock and distress from such events. Uh, we also hope that it's helpful to anyone who has been dealing with stress and needs to uh, get up and move again in order to feel better. In a moment, I will share my screen and we'll get started. We have to start again. Hello, and welcome to this webinar on Get Up and Move. I'm Dr. Alma Dell Smith at the National Mass Violence and Victimization Resource Center at the Medical University of South Carolina in Charleston, South Carolina. This webinar is geared for those who may have been exposed to mass violence, been present at an event, or whose uh, friends, family, someone they care about has also been exposed. This can create a lot of distress and it takes a while to recover. So this is part of a resiliency series that we have developed. In a moment, I'll share my screen and we can get started. So the main idea is to feel better and chase the blues with movement. Uh, exercise and movement can make a big difference in our mood. And any movement counts. We'll be talking about all the different ways that you can add movement or exercise to your life to uh, perk things up. So why should you move more? Uh, movement affects our brain in terms of memory, cognitive ability, uh, ability to think, breaking out of repetitive thoughts, uh, change of pace and scenery. Um, it, there's a lot of research that's been developed on how mood can be affected by exercise, anxiety, depression, uh, even the frustration of being out of control of certain events has been shown uh, to improve with exercise. And then I think most people are aware of the health benefits and we'll go over those later too. I'm gonna ask you, are you moving enough? There's self-assessment, ways you can step it up and find your groove. So how does mass violence affect the mind and the body? Even after a long time, you may feel physically exhausted, overwhelmed, and wanting to rest. You may feel emotionally exhausted from fear, sadness, or anger. And this can happen weeks and months after a tragic or traumatic event. You may feel helpless, like what's the use, hopeless, nothing's worth it, or afraid of going out. These are some of the common reactions that people experience after a traumatic event. Some unhelpful strategies are sleeping a lot. Now, it is important to rest um, after a really stressful event because it's so exhausting. 
But as the weeks go by, if you find you're sleeping a lot, that's perhaps not helpful. Uh, staying home is another uh, imp impulse that people have. They feel safe at home. They just don't wanna go out and face things. And again, in the first few weeks, that's perfectly normal. But as time goes by, if you find that you're staying home uh, too much, that's a, a sign that perhaps you need to move some more. Uh, using drugs or alcohol or another way that people try to numb feelings. But again, that can lead to more problems. Avoiding social or other events is another kind of thing that people would rather do is I just don't wanna get involved, I don't wanna go. One of the things that happens if you're avoiding too much uh, being with other people is that you may feel even more isolated and that can contribute to feeling sad, depressed, whatever. So we're gonna be talking today about breaking that cycle. The cycle is the less you do, the worse you'll feel. That sort of lethargy takes over. And as we may notice, the worse you feel, the less you'll do. And again, miss important events, lose connection with others. So we're gonna encourage you to take that first step, even if you don't feel like it. And one of the things we'll be talking about in the motivation is don't wait till you feel like it. Sometimes we just have to take some step to change the situation. Hopefully this is only comes up every now and then, and this isn't gonna be a, a, a great shift for you, but we wanna encourage you all the way to be more active. So what if you don't feel like moving? I encourage you to fight that urge to remain inactive and isolated. Eventually, it is important to engage with the world again. And don't wait until you feel like it. Inertia may keep you stuck. So the idea is to get going and then the feeling will catch up to you. There's a lot of times people say, I don't think I'm gonna enjoy that. I don't think I really wanna go. But then when you actually get up, get dressed, get there, even for it's a short time, you may find that you liked it after all, or at least you got some fresh air, or at least it, you got a, something new to think about. So the idea is to go, even if you don't feel like it. If after 15 or 20 minutes, you really don't like it, turn around and go home, that's fine. <clears throat> but we're talking now mostly about exercise in specifically, not just sort of getting out socially. Uh, exercise will increase your confidence. Uh, if you're feeling a little bit stronger, it can be a reason to get together with somebody else, definitely have better sleep. And you also can have some increased body awareness. Sometimes after uh, a really difficult period of time, our, our bodies may have aches and pains, we get stiff or just kind of not feeling so good. And as you exercise, you really get in tune with your body more and what is gonna make it feel better. Exercise makes you more relaxed, especially afterwards. It's very nice to relax afterwards. And in general, as we've said, better health. So what's not to like? It improves your memory and concentration, improves your mood, lowers your stress, you get more energy. It helps manage blood sugar and insulin levels. The other physical benefits are that it improves circulation to all the organs. When people talk about exercise, they usually talk about cardiovascular uh, health improvements, and that's absolutely true. But it, as the heart is pumping, as the blood is going through the body, it brings nutrients and oxygen to all the organs and takes away waste. So uh, it's good for the heart and endurance. Um, it, but it's good for every other organ in your body, down to your fingernails. It strengthens bones. It helps with balance and prevents falls. And the older we get, the more we're aware of how important it is not to fall. And 
Okay, you get longer and a more active life and your sex life improves. Another aspect of exercise, if we've been going through difficult times, is that a lot of times there's emotions that come and go and come and go. It can be kind of exhausting. Uh, so one of the thoughts here is to explore your feelings with movement. So if you notice that you're having some sadness or anxiety and worry, frustration, feeling stuck, even if you're excited and happy, take a few moments to move around, indoors or out, move slowly or with a lot of energy, and then notice how the feelings change. Uh, it may take a few minutes, it may uh, come and go, but generally as you move, as your body gets uh, activated, your thoughts and feelings also shift. So you can use this movement as a way to manage some of the difficult feelings that you may have been having. So the recommendation is that daily moderate exercise is better than an occasional vigorous training. <clears throat> the Center for Disease Control recommends 150 minutes of moderate exercise or 75 minutes of vigorous exercise each week. And that children and teens should get 60 minutes activity every day. But generally for adults, it translates to 30 minutes, five days a week. So sometimes we don't think we have time or what is that, you know, where am I gonna find 30 minutes? My schedule's already full. Uh, so we're gonna just talk about ways that you can break that up or how you can integrate that 30 minutes into your daily uh, uh, activities. But I like to think of that as 30 minutes isn't that much if you really think about it with a couple of rest days. Now, there are some risks to embarking on an exercise program or to getting back into something or to bumping it up. So you may set goals and think you're feeling and you feel worse if you don't sort of meet the expectations that you set for yourself. And I just want you to remember, there's no failure, no judgment, just getting going is a win for you. You may get physically uncomfortable, so pace yourself so your body's okay. Don't try to keep up with other people. <laughs> you may be sore in the beginning, then it's a sign of progress. Take a rest day. You may start out too fast and injure yourself. So again, regroup and learn about what your body needs. <clears throat> so what keeps people from moving? What are your barriers? Is there a thought that slows you down? Is there a feeling, bad sadness or fatigue. I just don't want to. I know I should, but I don't want to. Is there transportation issues? Are there family obligations? Knowing your barriers is really key to managing them, getting past them, and on the move. There's also behavioral inertia. What is inertia? A body at rest tends to stay at rest. The body in motion tends to stay in motion. So if you've been out of the habit of uh, regular exercise, it, there's a certain inertia that's important to kind of get out of. And then the good news is that once you get started in a good habit, that should continue. Sometimes there's a history of inactivity. Uh, in your own life, you really didn't get that involved with uh, sports or other kinds of dance or whatever, your family might not have, your friends don't. So uh, stepping out of that kind of culture and starting your own thing uh, might be a little bit of a challenge. <clears throat> I've mentioned the idea that there's not enough time and we'll talk about finding time. Sometimes there's discomfort or embarrassment uh, of People don't want to draw attention to themselves or they think they might not be good at something. And so there's, I remember the first time I went to a gym as an adult, a weightlifting gym, 
and there were mirrors and there were what really fit people and people were able to look working on machines I'd never seen before. And I was like really uncomfortable, but I talked to somebody there, I got the tour and slowly I overcame my discomfort. And now I, I like to go and explore what's possible. Sometimes body image concerns uh, are a barrier. Um, I don't know how I look in my sports activities. I don't want people looking at my legs, whatever it may be. So again, setting that aside. Money can be a barrier. Uh, gyms are expensive, but walking, it should be cheap. Hopefully you have a good pair of shoes. Safety is sometimes a concern, not being able to walk in your neighborhood and having to find a safe place to work out or exercise. And just what else? Think in for a few moments, what, if anything, is keeping you from being even more active in your life? So I've got this picture here, overcoming barriers, not to uh, set too big a challenge, but sometimes looking at those people who have had injuries and then overcome them to play basketball or do mountain climbing or whatever, it's just like, okay, if they can do that, I can do my thing that I need to be doing, um, not to compare myself or have expectations that I'm going to climb mountains, uh, but it's, a, it's an idea. So in those over overcoming barriers, it helps to work out with a friend, uh, add music, go to someplace really nice. And if you've got some of those fears and concerns, the idea is to face them a little bit at a time. If you're, uh, whatever it may be, just take a few baby steps, um, get out there for a little bit and then uh, that's enough and start slow to build up. Don't compare yourself to others, do what's important for you. The last part is about combining activities. Um, if you're gonna go shopping, maybe you park your car further away and have a fast walk to where you're going. Um, or uh, when, whenever you're out and about doing anything, to think of it as a way to uh, be more active and maybe get your heart rate up a little bit. <clears throat> I wanna talk a little bit about the importance of the warm up. Um, so the warm up is not just about getting your body ready to go, but it's your willingness to make this effort. If you've been somewhat inactive, the idea of exercise can seem unpleasant. Uh, maybe the weather's cold, maybe you just would rather sit around and read, but you kind of have that feeling like, eh, maybe I should do something today. <clears throat> if you start with gentle, slow movements, even in the house where you walk around, maybe do a few step ups, shift your weight from one foot to the at next, rock back and forth, maybe do uh, a lunge or a squat or something that just starts to get your body warmed up. Um, a few stretches might do a similar kind of thing. So, Continuing this idea, I'm going to go back to the warm up uh, and just share with you when I started getting back into exercise. I had to just tell myself, put your shoes on and go around the block. Just go around the block one time. Because the hardest part for me was getting out the door and on the street and, and going and moving it all. And I soon discovered that if I did one block, I was willing to go two or three more, and maybe even do my whole all the way to the park and back. So it's overcoming that initial uh, idea of it's going to take a while, I don't feel like it. And then getting out and warming up, you begin to feel hopefully more like it. Another tip is it doesn't have to be done in one session. If you have 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, that's okay too. They've done this research, especially for the health benefits. And it, it, you know, three minutes going up 
the stairs at the mall instead of taking the escalator or uh, the fast walk um, out and about when you're doing errands, thinking about that. And some people do the thousand steps, you know, if they have a step meter, it, it's like over the course of the whole day. <clears throat> the, another tip is to mix it up, to do muscle strengthening and aerobic training. And there's so many different ways to do that. So keep it flexible, keep it interesting. Make it fun if you can, even if it's just like once a week or once every few weeks, you can do something really special. It helps you to think, okay, I have this special event coming up. I really wanna be able to do it. So now I'm gonna do my regular daily exercise. So when I have this nice event, uh, I'll be ready to roll. Another tip is to move off getting things done. So whatever you're doing, kind of pick up the pace. If you're gardening or walking down steps, uh, one of the early ones that I thought, is this really gonna make a difference? I was reading the book about strong women stay young, uh, the, the research coming out of Tufts University. And they said, well, stand up and down on your tiptoes while you're washing the dishes. And I'm like, what can that do? But honestly, if you do just up, down, up, down on your tiptoes 10 times, 20 times, you can feel it in your calves, you can feel it in your knees and your legs uh, will respond with being stronger. And plus you just kind of get your energy up. <clears throat> and in the gardening, if you're fortunate to have a garden, the bending, the stretching, carrying, carrying kids, all that stuff can uh, be counted as a movement. Another really interesting form of movement for me are the moving meditations. And this is a moving more slowly generally, but as you move to really notice the ground under your feet, to feel your weight shifting from one leg to the other, to feel the air on your skin, any sounds or uh, sights that you may be passing, Tai Chi is a slow movement that's involved again with some meditation, yoga, balancing. Those are all ways that you just kind of tune into your body and they do add to your strengthening as you do that. But basically walking, it's the best thing. Uh, a good pace of walking is as health benefits as running. Uh, so you don't have to push yourself. If you want to push yourself, that's great. And if you have a sport that you enjoy and that inspires you to do even more, that's great. But also just kind of keeping it simple. Weight training does make a difference. Um, the, with the weight training, your, it impacts your bone structure your balance uh, and overall uh, posture um, prevents aches and pains. So it's a good idea to mix it up. The simplest things are the, what we call body weight exercises. So push-ups, sit-ups, squats, planks, Pilates, yoga, any of those. Uh, this example of the woman doing a push-up against a bench, I haven't been able to do a regular push-up in years but I can push up against a wall or the kitchen counter or a bench. Uh, and that is a modification that works for me uh, and to do that. The same thing with squats. Some people find, oh God, I squat down and up. I don't want to hurt my knees. Just squatting down to a chair and standing up and down from a chair uh, is a modification for a squat that might, again, strengthen your legs. <clears throat> If you want to lift weights, whether you want to lift light, medium, or heavy, uh, I really advise you to get some coaching first. I mean, there's plenty of videos about lifting weights, uh, but uh, I think your benefit uh, from having just a little bit of coaching about what's going to be right for you, whether it's a deadlift or whether it's pushing overhead for your arms or whether the physical therapist has given you some exercises to do, um, there are many, you know, just having eight pounds, 10 pounds, whatever, uh, more if you're able to, 
I think when my son first said, mom, you should have, be lifting 15 pounds. And I'm like, oh no, that's too heavy. But I learned that I could do that and actually um, use 20 pounds sometimes. So uh, that's always a good uh, addition. So uh, let's talk a little bit about motivation. What is it? <clears throat> it's basically what is important to you. Um, I, I just would ask you, you know, why are you checking out this seminar? Um, what were you thinking? What were you feeling that you thought, mm, I just want to uh, check this out? So motivation increases when we really, really focus on the positive benefits. Um, there's an expression that they call double the benefits. You think, okay, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna get stronger, I'll get a little more endurance, I won't be tired all the time, uh, but then try to have at least three or four more reasons to do it. So the more you really remind yourself of how important this is to me, and this really matters, and I'm really gonna benefit a lot from this, the more you keep that in front and center, uh, the, the more your motivation will grow. <clears throat> so to stay motivated and imagine that positive outcome as you're getting ready, scale the exercise to your fitness level. So again, the first time I started going to class, I would compare myself to other people until I was spoken to very firmly by the coach. You scale the exercise to what you're able to do. Don't look at what somebody else is able to do. And so if I can't do it, that's fine. I just change the exercise in such a way that I can do it. And then I feel successful at my fitness level. Another thing is to focus on the physical enjoyment, however small. Um, maybe the breathing you don't like or the heart rate you don't like, but there may be some other things that you like the stretching or you like the feeling afterwards. A coach or group can be highly motivating. There's somebody there who cares about how you're doing. There's a group energy. If there's a class that goes for 45 or 50 minutes, then you're more likely to go the whole 50 minutes instead of stopping after 20. Um, now, I do tell people, if you're in the middle of a class and you don't, feel, you don't feel good, it's perfectly okay to bail out of the class. Uh, if you can go another few minutes and try to go a little further, that's great too. But the point is not to feel um, uh, distressed by this exercise program. We want you to feel good when you're in the middle of it. And that leads to that simple and doable. So I'm just kind of asking you to think for a moment, any other ideas that you have that's gonna be helpful to you. I wanna add uh, another thing that can sometimes help us uh, get moving and overcome any reluctance that we have. And I mentioned it earlier, and that's called the 15 minute rule. So the idea is if you're not sure you're in the mood, you're not sure if a class is one you like, just do the best you can for 15 minutes. We can do almost anything <laughs> for 15 minutes. <clears throat> if after 15 minutes you've had enough, congrat your, congratulate yourself for doing that much and call it a day. The same with heading out the door for a walk. If after 15 minutes you're saying, I'm done, I'm heading home, that's great. But if after 15 minutes you're feeling more warmed up, you're starting to enjoy what you're doing, then you go for another 15 minutes or until the end of the time that you had set for yourself. That may be 45 minutes. And whenever you stop and you're done, you thank your body for being strong, your mind for getting you going and your spirit for uh, making this difference. So just asking now, what is your exercise habit? And 
you know, just whatever your habit is these days. When do you exercise, if ever? Where? Where's your favorite place or your, your usual place? How much? Do you think you're meeting that 30 minutes a day for five days out of the week or not quite more than that? And importantly, how does it feel before and after? What helps you keep going with this habit? Is there somebody in the family that encourages you, a friend, uh, something that you've been learning lately? And then what, if anything, hinders? What interrupts your good habits? So to build that good habit, be active with friends or family. Some people like to keep track of their progress. Uh, just make a quick note in a calendar someplace or have your own little notebook for it. And that way you can look back and think, okay, three months ago I was doing this and now I'm doing that. <clears throat> make it fun, mix it up. The other good thing is to find alternatives for bad weather. Um, I, as my sister-in-law used to walk in her house. It wasn't a big house, but she measured off, you know, what it was down the hall and back uh, through the kitchen and down the hall and back. And then she would walk that back and forth and back and forth until she got her one mile walk in. So find your alternative. So what's the best exercise? What's the best class? The one you will actually do the one you'll actually go to. And in these days of staying home a lot and things not always being open, there's so much online for at-home classes. Uh, some are free, some of us are a, a, a fee, some are on YouTube. For the first few weeks as you're getting an increase in your exercise, Try any class that fits your schedule. It doesn't matter if you don't know the routine or how to do the moves, uh, just show up if you think you could like it. So it's this idea of experimentation and getting overcoming any kind of reluctance or awkwardness until you get more into it. So just thinking for a few minutes of what's right for you. We've talked about a lot of different pieces of this puzzle. And they're just asking if one of these exercises style speaks to you. Uh, doesn't matter which technique you choose, like we say, the important thing is to find something that works for you. And something that allows you to carry this energy, purpose and calm into the rest of your day. So when is a good time for you? Think about your usual day. When are the times you could take a one minute stretch or stair climb that increases heart rate? Or you could actively exercise for 10 or 12 minutes? Is it first thing in the morning when you break at work, right after changing out of work clothes, before meals or before bed? Before meals is better than after meals. Um, I think people are more comfortable if they exercise on a more or less empty stomach. And then the important thing is to eat right afterwards, especially proteins. If you've been doing any weightlifting or strong muscle activities, because your muscles are most need protein uh, after their exertion in order to build strength. So that way you're working together to feed those muscles right away. Before bed is probably not a good idea for a lot of exercise, but certainly stretching, uh, um, evening yoga, uh, things like that. But basically, when is a good time? Anytime. Where's the best place? Any place, at home, outdoors, at work. Again, at your desk, some people stand uh, while they're working if they have a stand-up desk. Uh, Walking up and down stairs between meetings, don't take the elevator. 
But the other thing is at, at the desk, you can just stand up, sit down, stand up, do 10 up downs uh, and get your uh, blood flow going with your legs and stretch out your tendons so that you don't get the soreness that comes from too long sitting in a chair. So wherever you are, you can move a little bit more. Just finally, again, think of the ways you like to exercise when you can do it and decide when you'll exercise each day and what will help you stay with your plan. There's so many resources uh, online. There are free apps as well. Um, some of the best are the Daily Workout Fitness Trainer, 7-Minute Workout, Daily Yoga. I think just a search uh, for best apps and kind of, again, thinking about what works for you. The YouTube videos and if there are community groups. Um, a lot of them are online and every now and then starting slowly to get back in person. So, oops, self-care is a good thing. So, I said self-care is not selfish. That was the last slide. <clears throat> anyway, best of luck to you. I really hope that you'll take uh, some of these thoughts and um, experiment with what's going to work for you. Don't get discouraged. If you feel like you have some setbacks or you have days or weeks that you skip, that's just how it is. And you can always start the very next minute to do something to keep yourself moving. All right. All the best. Bye.